Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. This is another one of my things we take for granted videos. Uh, and the thing that we're taking for granted in this video um, is that that's, this sum right here converges to one over one minus x for um, negative one less than x less than one. Um, and I'm going to be showing that today, or at least uh, just trying to give you an intuitive reason for why that's true. It's not going to be a rigorous mathematical proof. I don't ever do that stuff on this, uh, that kind of stuff on this channel. Um, I just want to show you why it, it should be true. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to list out what the terms of this are going to look like. The first term is going to be 1, because we'll have x to the 0, anything to the 0 is one, except for zero, of course. Um, but uh, anyway, we would get one plus x to the one, which is just x plus x squared plus x cubed plus on and on and on forever. And we'll set that equal to my favorite variable, question mark. All right, now we'll take this equality and divide both sides by x. That's going to give us 1 over x plus 1 plus x plus x squared plus on and on and on and on forever. And that's still equal to question mark only divided by x. So that's equal to question mark over x. Okay, now let's take a look at this, what this string of numbers actually is. This is exactly this. This is exactly... It's the same thing that we have up here, only it just starts with, with this one. But we can say that this right here, this is question mark. We can say that 1 over x plus question mark is equal to question mark over x. Now, multiplying both sides by x gives us 1 plus question mark x is equal to question mark. Um, let's go ahead and try to isolate this question mark here. So we get one plus, or I'm sorry, one is equal to question mark minus question mark times x. Factor out the question mark. We get one is equal to question mark times 1 minus x, or question mark is equal to 1 divided by 1 over 1 minus x. Great, we're done, right? No, not really. I mean, that's a cool trick and everything, but all that does is show that if this sequence does converge, if this series does converge for a certain value of x, it's going to equal this thing. It won't tell you anything about what this thing actually does if this doesn't converge. Um, so now we have to kind of figure out what our restrictions on x are. And the, uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to start plugging, plugging numbers in. Okay. Zero. Does this thing hold true for zero? Yeah, it does. We get... Well, 0 to the 0, which is kind of undefined, um, but it's definitely not infinity. Um, so we can say it's it may be some finite number. And then the rest is very familiar. It's, um, if we pick 0, we'll get uh, 0 to the 1, that's just 0. So we'll get some finite number um, plus a bunch of zeros. So it works for 0, so 0 is good. What about, uh, all right, another simple number, one. Is it good for one? And we can obviously see that it's not. Um, and in fact, we can kind of get an interesting uh, argument for the value of um, zero to the zero from this series right here. And we can see that it should actually be one. Um, if we plug it, because if we let x equals zero, what we get is this. We get x to the 0 
plus, or I'm sorry, zero to the zero plus zero to the one plus zero squared plus zero cubed. And that's equal to one over one minus zero, which is equal to one. Um, obviously, zero to the one is zero. Zero to the two is zero. Zero to the three is zero. And all we're left with is this equality, zero to the zero is equal to one. I know that does not settle it right there, but that's, that's one argument in favor of zero to the zero being considered one. Um, but anyway, let, let's get on with what we were doing. We were trying to show, we were trying to uh, place restrictions on X. So, um, if we pick one, we can see that this thing does not hold true uh, for the simple reason that if we plugged in, um, if we plugged in one here, we would get division by zero, which is not allowed. And we can obviously see that if we pick one, we're going to get one plus one plus one plus one forever and ever, and that would diverge to off into infinity. Um, so one is no good. Uh, and for the same reason, any number bigger than one is no good too, because if it's bigger than one, we can see this is going to be a positive number. And if, if X is bigger than one, this will be a negative number, leading to a positive being equal to a negative, which is no good. Okay. Um, so yeah, X definitely has to be less than one. It can't equal one, it can't be greater than one, it has to be less than one. All right, um, so we tried zero. What about another easy number, negative one? Well, what do we get if we plug in negative one? This one's a little bit more tricky. If we plug in negative one, we get, um, let's see, negative one to the zero, that's one, and then we get minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, dot, 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 plus minus for ever, and that's equal to one over, let's see, one minus a negative one would be a two. Now that is not true. Uh, one minus one plus one minus one plus one is not equal to one half. It, it is not equal to anything this is non-convergent. I know there's lots of tricks on the, inter on the uh, internet um, doing all sorts of weird things with this, but it's, it's not true though. This is not equal to one half. It, it doesn't have a value. It doesn't ever settle on a value. You can't say that it's one half. So negative one is no good. And for the same reason, any number less than negative one would be no good also. So X is greater then negative one. All right. Um, so are there any other restrictions that would make this thing uh, on X that would make this thing obviously not true? Like we've checked zero. Zero is good. Um, and uh, let, let's try maybe one half. Okay. Well, let's plug it into this first. If we plug uh, one half into here, we get one over one minus one half, which is just one over one half, which is just two. So is it conceivable that this thing would converge to two? Let's see. Well, we get one half to the zero, which is one. Then we get one half to the one, which is one half. Then we get plus one fourth, plus one eighth, yeah, that's, uh, that's conceivable that that would equal uh, 2. I'm not going to prove that it does. I mean, it does due to uh, the convergence of geometric series, but I'm not going to be proving that. So um, we can see that this thing conceivably converges for, uh, the val for uh, x is equal to 1 half. So it doesn't look like there's going to be any problems in between negative 1 and 1. So anyway... That is the, uh, that's not a proof, that's just a reason, that's kind of an intuitive reason why this series right here converges to 1 over 1 minus x 
for x in between negative 1 and 1. All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.